thank you for joining us. I have Dr. John West, who's a breast surgeon here with us, and we are going to talk about breast cancer in women under 40. Okay, I know we've talked before about right. the 40, not, you know, not 50 Starting campaign. yearly mammograms at age 40 and doing it properly, we won't get into that, but we can cut uh, breast cancer mortality better than in half. We have right. fantastic. We do have a problem with women under 40 because they're not doing self-exam. Uh, they're not getting any form of screening imaging. So we basically wait till a lump develops. And oftentimes uh, when a patient tells the doctor she found a lump, they say, ah, you know, it's just fibrocystic. Oh, you're a hysterical female. They don't address it properly. So that's why women need to be armed with the information. They need to say, no, I need a diagnostic ultrasound. I need to have you check that because right. that may not be cancer, but if it is, I want to know it right now. Right. And if you just have that simple rule, you add a few other things, but that's a starting point. So there, it, it's not as hard as one might think. It's just that we've ignored women under 40 because it's not as common in that age group. Only at the most 10% of the women are diagnosed right. under 40. Right. Well, then also, though, as a patient, may maybe people feel a little intimidated and, and they're afraid to ask for something like that. I hope not in this day and age, but I think it, that that is true. And certainly women get discouraged because <clears throat> when they think about checking their breasts, it's usually right before their period, and they feel all this lumpiness and tenderness, and they go, well, I never feel it, cancer on that breast. Mm -hmm. they're, they're right, it is about, you have to wait for about five to 10 days for the effect of the estrogen to drop and so the breasts get less bumpy and less tender. And that's the perfect time to do the self-exam. And every woman should at least be familiar with the normal breast. Ideally, they should be checking it once a month, right. uh, five to 10 days after the period. I've been trying to promote that for a long time, a little discouraged, but it can save a life. Right. And just, just being aware of your normal breast tissue, you know, spending some time when, when you're least bumpy, 10 to days, five or 10 days after your period, and just learning, getting a mindset of what the mental limit, once your brain has a mental picture mm -hmm. and you check them, you'll pick up a subtle change because the brain is, is designed to pick up changes like that. It's very effective. Okay. So what I think then they're worried about, well, they come in with a little subtle change and the doctor says, no, oh, it's just fibrosis. No, oh, don't worry. It doesn't run in your family. There's a million reasons why. You say, no, this is simple. No, I want a diagnostic ultrasound. Okay. If that's negative, fine. It probably will be nine times out of 10. Right. But if it's positive, you're going to save your life. Exactly. Okay, so let's talk about breast cancers in women under 40. Is it more popular now? Are we seeing more? There is a slight increase uh, in the under 40 age group, but I, I don't know if it's that big a deal compared to uh, other factors. I think we have to realize that women under 40, when they get a cancer, tends to be a little more aggressive. Mm. And, and that's one of our problems. And of okay. course, with the screening we do, we always, we, 90, it seems like almost always we find these little bitty things you can't feel, but we're not screening uh, women in that age group unless they're high risk. Now, if we find a woman whose mother had it or sister had it at a young age, we mm -hmm. do BRCA testing, okay. BRCA one and two, as we did with Angelina Jolie. Right. If those women have a mutation, then we start screening as early as 25 and we start with the MRI yearly. Okay. So uh, it, it really is important for women who are high risk to know that they're really different and they absolutely need the yearly screening. Now women say whose mother was diagnosed with breast cancer at 45 should do it 10 years earlier. So mm -hmm. she should do it at 35. Okay. And these are kind of, these rules are often not followed, but they can be life-saving. Right. And so I think a woman needs to understand her risk. Women like Ashkenazi Jewish background, or maybe more distant relatives with breast or ovarian may be at risk. I had a young woman who was diagnosed with breast cancer in her early 40s. She had zero family history. Well, I went back and checked and checked and checked. Finally, her great-grandfather had male breast cancer who passed oh, wow. it on to her grandfather who passed it on to her father, but none of the men got it. Right. So it was a silent uh, mutation. And so any woman out there could have a silent muta mutation just like, but if you have a strong family history, by all means do risk assessment right. and determine what is the most effective way that you should do screening. Okay. And probably find a doctor in a high risk clinic or at least a surgeon or somebody who's really interested in early detection because if you are higher risk, it's just better if you're followed in an environment where there really are interested and and I think if your OBGYN isn't checking your breast when you're going for your woman exam 
you might say, hey, maybe you ought to be checking them or maybe you ought to find somebody who does because right. you can't be expected uh, to know it as well as you'd know it if you checked it after somebody with medical experience says this is normal for you. Right. Once the normal breast is identified, you just say, all I need to do is learn the pattern. And it takes a few days of going over both mm -hmm. breasts completely and finally you say, okay, I'm familiar with it, so I'll do it you know, once a month. Okay. And if there's a change, then I'll report it. Okay. Now, uh, we've heard of cases where there are women who are even younger than 35 because of possible radiation exposure of some sort. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, first of all, there is general agreement that if you've had, for instance, Hodgkin's disease in your teens, you are at very high risk for early onset breast cancer. So they're just as high as if you had a BRCA mutation, so they should also start MRI screening at age 25, and they should be okay. followed in a, a high-risk clinic. So we know uh, just doing excessive mammograms or, or chest x-rays in a young age uh, can lead to a higher risk, but now we're all we're aware of that, and they use lead shields, and we try to okay. use as little as possible. But I know what you're referring to here, and you're talking about the cell phone, yep. and people are skeptical. I went on the Oz show to talk about a 21-year-old who had been recently diagnosed. Uh, she was started putting her cell phone in her bra at age 17. She put it in her bra when she woke up, and she took it out of her bra, and she had, so she had about 12, 14 hours of exposure. Mm -hmm. Her mom was just nervous as could be about it, and uh, finally she develops a cancer. One of my other 21-year-old patients had a cancer that was exactly the length and width of her cell phone. The calcification was right near the surface. Hmm. I mean, it was mind-boggling. So I'm, I'm convinced there's a relationship, and I think mothers particularly should tell their daughters to make the bra no phone zone you'll keep yeah. that bra, keep that cell phone out of the bra if you want to have right. a cell phone put it in a purse or a side pack or a fanny pack I don't, you know i don't there's other ways of doing it right uh but this idea of, of particularly with teenage girls when the breast is is developing mm -hmm. and of course more and more the younger and younger women are or have access to cell phones, and so a convenient place to put it is in your bra. Right, and I think right. sometimes if you're in school or something, it's a cool thing to do. That you're hiding yeah. it. The teacher's not going to look in your bra. Right. So, um, well, if I was an inventor, yeah. I would invent some sort of a, a, a film to go over the, the front of the phone. Well, they have a bunch of these that are marketed, and it turns out that <laughs> you can't get reception with the ones that they've had so far. <laughs> so. Uh, I don't know if you could put a, a lead shield a lead on your shield. Desk. We're going to have lead shields on our phones. I don't think I can sell that one. <laughs> no, no. But uh, I think just keeping it out, just making, well, make yeah. the bra a no phone no zone. Phone. Now remember, no phone, no phone zones in your bra. Because <laughs> you're right, you can always do a pocket or you something else. You can find else. something. Yeah. Yeah, Use a little creativity, with, yeah. Well, especially with the possibility of some sort of radiation exposure with right, it. So, right, okay. right, it can okay. be big. Now we talked about early detection being the key and women checking their breasts. What are some other things that you would recommend them doing to help steer clear of any breast cancer? Well, let's go to risk first and then I'll go to diet and risk and risk reduction strategy. So okay. it, in terms of the risk assessment, we've already touched on it, but every woman should make an attempt to know whether she has breast cancer, ovarian cancer, and really other cancers in the family. We're mm -hmm. learning more and more of it is genetically uh, based, or at least a certain percentage of colon cancer, pancreatic cancer. So all these things, once we identify them, and now uh, it's so inexpensive. When Angelina Jolie had her testing, it was $4,000 mm -hmm. for two genes, BRCA1, BRCA2. There's now 32 genes that we check out, wow. that we an analyze for $200. Oh, there we go. And sometimes the insurance will pay for that. That. But if you mean for two hundred dollars, it's a great present, Christmas present, or something, you know, to give somebody, uh, you know, pay for that two hundred dollar test mm -hmm. and have them have their blood tested. It, it's relatively simple, or just send in uh, saliva is all, all that. It oh, takes. Okay. So it's uh, very simple. It's a local company here, and the, there's so much competition now that Twenty Three and Me and a lot of these companies are are really trying to to get the uh, analysis done so women can be protected. You see, mm -hmm. if it's negative you know that you're not gonna pass it on to the next generation, mm -hmm. and future generations know that you didn't pass on. So that's really, wow. really important information. Mm -hmm. However, if you're positive, this changes everything. Right. Then, whatever age you are, even a, I wouldn't know about the, maybe age 21 on, but maybe a few 18-year-olds might wanna talk about it. You tell them just, you know, 
relax, but, right. but we usually start more aggressive screening at 25. Mm -hmm. But if I had a, a daughter, I, I think I would talk to her at 18 and say, I want you to have it by 21. Yeah. So I don't think I'm gonna have any daughters in the near future, but if I did, <laughs> <laughs> my granddaughter. Well, there you go. Yeah, I'll say it'll be a long time before she's 21. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you know, something you mentioned, you said ovarian cancer. Is there, is there a correlation if someone in my family's had ovarian cancer Absolutely, that I could get yeah. ovarian and other cancers? If you have ovarian in the family, that's of a greater risk than having breast in the cancer for mm. this BRCA1 and 2 mutation. Okay. So, but BRC, ovarian cancer is much less common, okay. so we don't hear as much about it. But if we see breast and ovarian in the same family, then we know we're at higher probability of coming up with a positive. So it's really important for particularly younger women, but really all women to know your family history, jot it down. One of the important things we do in addition to just gen genetic testing in our clinic is create a whole family a pedigree. So we know, uh, and, and as new information comes in, we update it. So by the time future generations uh, want that information, it'll be very detailed and, and right. we'll have the information to really analyze them. I, I think it's not gonna be long till at birth you're gonna have these things have the opportunity right. to have it done. And maybe some people can make uh, some concerns about why you wouldn't want to do it. And uh, I'm sure there are people that would. Yeah. But to me, it's illogical. It, it, right. The only logical thing, because there's so many other things we're going to be testing for. So I think right. uh, I'm not pushing that right now. But I think theoretically, I, we're very aggressive about, in fact, one of the most common groups that we get this additional testing on is women who we've operated on previously for breast cancer mm. and they say well i want to make sure my grandkids or my kids don't get it so they get right. tested most of the time they're negative and then nobody else has to get tested because they know it's right. not going through the mother of course you still have to look at the father's side right okay okay and then also you mentioned to reducing the risk so the, that's through a right. testing what are some of the other things well you know uh people say why is so higher incidence in orange county i mean we're we're a healthy county very right. well off and can be, well it's because we're well off that we're having problems, uh, girls develop quickly. They, they don't exercise like a, somebody who's living out on a farm, so they tend to be overweight. They tend to eat the wrong kind of food, you know, the, the fast food, the McDonald burgers and, and whatever, high, high in fats, high in chemicals, you know, mm -hmm. and things that may pr predispose them mm -hmm. uh, to that. So, so I think having a good, healthy diet now, <laughs> teenagers you know don't necessarily want to eat just uh, right. you know minimize the meat not pro they love the processed food mm -hmm. they love the sugar they love the carbohydrates but uh, by eating a high carbohydrate sugar diet it's very hard to control your weight and if you right. want to lose weight just get rid of the carbs get rid of the sugar mm -hmm. then it becomes pretty straightforward but right. the problem is the sugar the carbs are absorbed almost immediately so you eat it get a lot of calories and you're hungry again in, mm -hmm. in a half an hour and so you need to eat eat more whereas if you eat something that's uh, like an avocado that's high in plant fat right. very slowly absorbed so you get a lot of you burn the whole thing off before you're hungry again and okay. so it, it carries you a lot longer and you don't get hungry so quickly okay so because controlling your weight is really key right and then there's okay. the issue of alcohol so there's some pretty good data that binge drinking like college girls who are more and more inclined to binge drink they can't drink during the week but they have seven or eight nine margaritas with their with their enchiladas and tacos and stuff and it's so easy to do that because it's a social uh thing but spreading it out having no more than one a day is probably a lot better than having seven in one day even for okay. for adults but uh if you have a, a risk, you know, a strong risk of breast cancer in the family, maybe something you would think about is, is really controlling that even at a, a young age. Okay. Uh, yeah. Good. Good. Well, good to know. I mean, all of the things that you've mentioned have been very helpful, but you also have a book I do. that we could dive into even more. So why don't we just touch quickly on your book? Well, here's why I wrote it. I can't convince women to do self-exam. I don't have the time. I think if I had a lot of time with them, I, I can't. Uh, I, I know there's a lot of women out there that aren't getting good advice. They have breast problems. Uh, I've had women who have bounced around for almost a year and the cancer has spread before somebody mm. made the diagnosis. Now that that's unusual, but we find that if we're proactive in terms of screening, doing an exam, particularly the ultrasound for younger women, right. the combination of mammogram plus screening ultrasound for older 
uh, 40 and over women. And then for women that are high risk or have very dense breasts, consider adding the MRI. Mm -hmm. You put all those things together for women over 40, and we're going to save so many lives, it's unbelievable. Right. But people, the doctors just don't have the time to explain right. all these things. A classic example of that is a woman with dense breasts. About half of women, their breasts are dense, particularly the younger women. Well, mammograms don't work very well in dense breasts, so you have to add an ultrasound. When right. you use, do the, like the 3D mammogram, plus right. the screening ultrasound, you double the pickup of small cancer. Mm -hmm. Very few doctors really are aware of that or have the time to discuss it. Right now, we're on the computer all the time. We're constantly right. you know, doing paperwork. It's very hard to get in these lengthy discussions. Yeah. One of the other discussions that's difficult to get into, but very important, is, is the hormones. So the birth control pills that we use now, fortunately, <clears throat> the data is looking very good on those. Okay. It looks very safe because they're low dose. The hot previous ones were a bit of a problem. Now for women 50 and over, or, who go, or women who go into menopause, they, a lot of them need hormone replacement, but if mm. they have an intact uterus, in other words, they have not had a hysterectomy, if they take the combination of estrogen and progesterone for more than four years, their cancer risk goes up. Right. And it, the longer they do it, the more. Now there's a drug out called Duovi. I've got a whole chapter on that here. Okay. Where else are you gonna get this information? It's not out there. Right. But it, 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 it you can take that safely, get the estrogen you need to control your menopausal symptoms, you will be a happier person for it, and you're not running the increased risk of getting a breast cancer. Hmm. Oh, that's great, that's so great. It is so, great. So all of the information that we've talked about and information that you could probably search in various places is all contained in one spot. I think book. everything you know, you need to know for early diagnosis, maximize your chance of you know, living through breast cancer or catching it early, everything is in here. And it goes into what you do if in fact you've just been diagnosed with cancer. But the main part is education for the general public. Right. If we could get the public 80 or 90 percent more involved in this sort of thing, we would eliminate breast cancer as a top cause of death in young women. Uh, we'll never eliminate it completely, but we're making a lot of progress in other areas that will help us treat it more effectively. Mm -hmm. So I sure like to see by uh, the next generation that breast cancer is no longer the problem that it is today. Right. Follow the advice here and you'll protect yourself. Perfect. And perfectly said. Thank you very much for the information. Thank you for nice asking me. I enjoyed it. And remember that determining your risk is really a key and also controlling your weight and cutting back on alcohol too. <laughs> Thank you for joining us.